that is why we say don't do it. If the guy is young, if he is uh, uh, still in his uh, power and youth, we tell him, you know, if you're afraid that you may, this may lead to something a little bit more serious, no, then, then do not kiss, do not hug, do not fondle your wife. While fasting, that is, not after fasting. But if a person is capable of uh, holding himself from doing, from getting into intercourse, then it is permissible. And the evidence behind that is the hadith narrated by Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. She said that the Prophet ﷺ used to kiss and, found, uh, and uh, fondle his wife while he was fasting. But he was the one among you who had most control over his sexual desire. So this tells us that <coughs> as long as you can control yourself, go ahead and do it. It's something that it, that it is sunnah. The Prophet did it alayhi salatu wasalam. Some of us, unfortunately, are so hard, are, they have hearts of stone. They would not fondle their wives. They would not kiss their wives. They would not be intimate and kind to their wives, thinking that we should be uh, as far apart from each other until there is something we want from each other. No, this is wrong. The Prophet ﷺ used to kiss his wives before going to prayer without performing ablution, without making wudu, which means that kissing your wife, touching your wife, is, is permissible and it's, 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 it's commendable uh, without performing ablution for prayer. Now, uh, there is another hadith where uh, one of the companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, is kissing uh, my wife permissible? It, does it affect my uh, fasting? So the Prophet ﷺ said, does rinsing your, your mouth, you know, madmada, does rinsing your mouth, does uh, turning the water in your mouth affect your fasting? So he said, no. He says, likewise, it doesn't. Because nothing went into uh, your stomach from rinsing your mouth. And the same thing, nothing happened after kissing your wife. Now, some scholars say, no, you should not kiss, you should not fondle your wife. And why is that? Because they say that probably uh, a mavi would be emitted. And if mavi is emitted, then this may affect your uh, fasting. Some scholars say, no, it breaks your fasting. It nullifies your fasting. But again, this uh, opinion is not that authentic simply because the Prophet ﷺ did it. And as long as the Prophet did it والسلام, then it is permissible for us to do it unless you are afraid that it would lead into uh, intercourse. Any more question? Uh, Your Eminence, I heard such terms like uh, Mavi and Wadi. Would you please tell us the difference between them? Mm -hmm. Mavi. M-A-T-H-I. Mavi. And we have Wadi. W-A-D-I. And we have many. M-A-N-N-I or one N. These are three terminologies used to describe the things that come, comes, come out of the private parts of males and females. And they are usually connected, not all of them, but uh, for example, many means uh, semen. And both men and, uh, males and females have semen, but it differ in, uh, sh uh, of, uh, in, in color and in, in uh, uh, actual uh, thing. It, it's different in, in properties, in color and, and properties. Uh, semen, as we know, is emitted after uh, sexual intercourse, after s having this sexual passion. And this calls for a total bath. If it is emitted, one should have the obligatory or total bath. You cannot pray, you cannot read the Quran, you cannot perform uh, Umrah, or you have to have this sexual purity. Because at, if, it w if it is emitted, you are uh, sexu sexually impure. And you have to perform this total 
an obligatory bath. This, uh, the emission of semen, has two properties to it that makes it, makes it, uh, nullifies, it nullifies your, your uh, uh, fasting and also makes you in a state of uh, uh, sexual impurity. Providing it comes out with, uh, accompanied with passion, with lust, with desire. And providing it comes out uh, in a pumping way. It pumps out. It does not come uh, smoothly. It, it, it comes with uh, a pumping action or something like uh, that sort. So this is many. Many itself is pure. The substance itself is pure because it is the origin of mankind. That is why it's pure. But by emitting it, one should have this uh, obligatory total bath. Now, mevi is a white, thin substance that comes out of men and female uh, uh, because of uh, sexual desire. So if one fondles, if one kisses his wife, if he, if he sees something that he desires sexually, that is, this uh, liquid comes out in the form of uh, uh, two or three drops of him. This does not call for total bath. But it is impure. He should uh, uh, clean uh, himself and, and, and the, the spots that touched his clothes. He should wash it. And he should perform wudu. He should perform ablution whenever he wants to pray because it nullifies his wudu. It nullifies his uh, ablution. But it does not nullify his fasting. The fasting is as it is. Now, uh, uh, wadi is the third thing. It's a yellowish, thin, and sometimes a little bit thick uh, drops of liquid that usually comes after uni urinating. When somebody urinates, it comes at the very end. And uh, usually it comes when uh, the weather is too cold. It comes unintentionally. When it's too cold, it's freezing. Or when someone carries a very heavy load. It comes out of him. Again, it does not call for total uh, bath, obligatory bath, but it does call for washing it uh, to clean it and for ablution. I hope this answers your question. Any more questions, please? Yes, sir. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Why does women's uh, period uh, breakfast? Why does women period break their fast, nullifies their fast? Well, actually, uh, one woman came to Aisha, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, and she asked her a similar question. She uh, told her, why do uh, women make up for their fasting when they have, after they are, are, uh, their, their monthly period is over, and they don't make up for their prayer? So, Mother Aisha was uh, annoyed with her. And, and, and she was a little bit harsh talking to her. And she told her that you should believe in what uh, the Prophet ﷺ told us. This is the way that he taught us. He told us uh, uh, if a woman is uh, clean and her menstruation is over, she should make up for the days she did not fast. But he never told us to make up for the, day, the, for the prayers that she skipped. This is uh, a ruling from Allah Azza wa Jal. So one could make a lot of justifications, but they, are not, they do not hit the point. We can't uh, say for sure that this is why Allah Azza wa Jal told uh, women not to make up for the prayer. Yet this is the ruling of Allah. We should accept it. We don't have to ask for the wisdom behind every single thing because definitely we're not going to reach that uh, level of knowing the wisdom. We, ju we should just fulfill Allah's orders. Allah told her that this breaks your fast, then it breaks her fast. I, I think this is all the time we have for today's lesson until we meet inshallah next time. Fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.